Hello everyone and welcome to Chaos Theory. I am once again your humble host Sean, coming to you with a segment I like to call DM Diaries, where I discuss with you my experience as both a first time player and DM, and hopefully we both can learn from my many, many mistakes. So a little background about me. I have been, or I should say I was a player for about six or seven months. Uh, I recently had to leave my game because of a work change and, you know, scheduling conflict, the dreaded killer of D&D groups. Uh, and I have been DMing for about a month now. And the very first thing I learned as a DM that I would have never thought of as a player, modules, source books, all the material out there in the world for D&D will be your best friend. So going in... I, my group decided that they wanted to do a Viking thing game. So I took the time to learn everything I could about Vikings, everything I could about Norse mythology. And I started building a heavily Norse mythology themed Viking world for them. And I started describing the world to my players and it made absolutely no sense. The players was confused. The players were confused. I was confused. It was a confusing experience. So in my confusion, I decided, well, I can't just say, never mind about the Viking theme and just run a completely different game. These players have already made characters. They've already developed backstories in this theme. So I reached out to material that has already been created with the Viking theme. And I found the Journey to Ragnarok source book which had stat blocks in it for every Norse mythology themed creature that you could think of. It had pre-made clans, it had history, lore, everything. And I used that to build my world around it. Not saying that you can't build your own world using a source book, but source books will be a great guide. Like the source book can be the skeleton. Your world can still have a brain that is yours, a heart, a everything else can be yours, but that source book will be a great base for you. And from that source book, I pulled some of the player's favorite characters. And then I have my own characters that I made up that I also threw in the game. Once I had that base, I built everything. And I, when I say everything, I built everything. I built the continent that my players were going to play on, and I built three continents around it with their own political structures and ideals and all that. And that brings me to a point that you will hear a lot, and that is do not over prep, which I could not disagree with more. There is no such thing as over prep. My ideology is it's always better to have it and not need it. You can over prep, but... Do not expect things to go the way you want. Say you build a hallway for your players and at the end of that hallway, so it doesn't feel so railroady, you put 10 doors. They have 10 options of what they can do. Well, your players might instead decide to turn left and bust a hole through the wall instead of going through any of the doors you set out for them. There has to be something on the other side of that wall. And based on that world you built, even though they didn't take any of the things that you pre-made, you know enough about your world and all the prep that you've done to put something on the other side of that wall. And that leads to some of the best RP for your players. But the worst thing you could do is for them to break through that wall and just fall into nothingness or they break through that wall and there's just another wall behind it. That, while that is an option, it will be a disappointment for some players. Uh, a key example that I experienced as a player, our DM had a scenario set up where one of our players would get kidnapped and we were supposed to go rescue her. Well, when the time came, we all were knocked unconscious. The remaining kidnappy player who was a worshiper of Tiamat, decided she was going to pray to Tiamat to save her. And she rolled very, very well, leading to all of her kidnappers being murdered with the help of Tiamat. And the DM had no idea where to go from there and just ended the session. And needless to say, myself and the other players were 
furious. We had a four hour session plan and we ended an hour into it. This is the scenario you absolutely do not want. You have to, if there's nothing else, let the players play it out themselves. This happens and then one of your best tools for keeping a session going if you don't have anything planned, let the players do what they want to do. It's, it's never a bad idea to say, what do you guys want to do? Or what are you doing? That can eat up, and I've experienced this myself in the short time I've been DMing, that can eat up hours of time. They might be planning on going to a village that same day and never get there because they spend most of their time playing their characters, RPing, just enjoying the experience. So, prime example. During my first session, I had two encounters planned for my players. Once they were all introduced and got to know each other or got to meet each other, I planned for them to go to point A, point B, point C and experience two battles in that time. Well, once the players met each other, got what they their quest pretty much was, they decided they wanted to go meet other people in the town. And I let them. They wanted to talk to a shopkeeper about his past, which happened to coincide with another player's past that I just happened to have to make up on the fly. They wanted to meet one of the leader of the village's uh, servants or one of his go-to guys and hear about his past. I planned that out or off the top of my head. And by the time they got done talking to everybody and interacting with people in the village and interacting with each other, they only had time for one of the three encounters or the three points that I had planned in a four hour session. And they loved it. They ended the session saying that they thoroughly enjoyed the experience of just meeting people in the town and just being left to their freedom to do whatever they want to do. This, however, can be a double edged sword because oftentimes when players left to their own devices without any kind of guidance, will lead to you having to come up with a lot of stuff on the fly. And if you're not taking notes or like we are doing a like a live play, you might forget some of the stuff that was not planned that was improvised. So I advise always take notes. Even if you are playing live on Twitch or YouTube or some other platform, it's always good to have those notes to go back to and reference all the stuff that you had to make up off the top of your head. Speaking of YouTube and the internet, New DMs, your DMs guide is going to be your best friend for starting your new game. But your second best friend is going to be the internet. Because there are so many sources out there for great DM tips and advice. There's Jenny D, there's DMs Lair, there's How to Be a Great DM, Geek and Sundries, DM Tips. So many to pull from. Use those resources because they will all come from great people who've had tons of experience doing what you're trying to start doing. And that about does it for this video, guys. If you want to see my actual experience, first time DMing, the first three sessions of my campaign are up on my channel. Be sure to check those out. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more of it, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, stay chaotic.